what I'm saying isn't isn't the, the the blueprint. It is what it is. How are you gonna live with it? How are you gonna deal with it? Unless you make it conscious, mm -hmm. it remains unconscious, and you don't deal with it. You start having a conversation, just planting seeds for people to think about these things. It can make a big difference. We've had a population of people that have had lived a culture of silence that have to bear the brunt of this for too long, and, and we should give them a break. There are choices being made all the time. Mm -hmm but you're gonna to have to look below the surface, below the momentum, yeah. in order to identify those. And, and, and some of those choices are not for the benefit of the world. Mm -hmm. They may be for the benefit of one person, mm -hmm. you know, who's exploiting all of these other things. You have to pay attention to the best interest of the child, That's right. not in relation to you. That's right. You're at the center of having to navigate these two worlds of, you know, your inner family environment fully embracing you and loving you. And then this outer external environment that you have to interface with where people don't understand it. And you have to explain it to other people. And then you have to understand it for yourself. Families are needed. Support is needed. Love is needed. And I'm not saying adoption is the solution to that. I'm just saying love and families and taking care of one another does not have to be in a traditional setting that's what we think about it. And it's always amazing to me why some people are so deeply invested of what other family structures should look like. I think what we can donate to the <laughs> world is more information about how to integrate families, how to accept differences um, on every level. Wouldn't we all be better off that the more families that we have, that people have support to one another, who cares if they got two mothers or a black father and a white uh, father or whatever the structure, I've never invested, in, you know, the fact that you have neighbors, I'm not invested in how their family structure looks like. I just want to know who my neighbors are, you know what I mean? As people, obviously, we we thrive, I think, the, the most when we're with people who we can see ourselves in and stuff like that. And then you just, you share like these common experiences that you can easily relate and you, you have more that you can talk to somebody about because you know that they understand it too. But I, you know, there's something in the wiring of being adopted and going through the process. I'm just, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Yeah, and you get, might kick me, I might fall down, but I'm gonna get my back up. If you are not rooted in your truth mm -hmm. and living your gifts and loving the people that are close to you, what are you doing? Right. Technically, we're all the same. It's just, I just have something identifying that I've definitely gone through some things, whatever that may be. Adoption connects more of us than we think. Yeah. When we talk and we're open and we're vulnerable, right, and we share, there's an impact that ripples out into the world. What a blessing to be able to have this space to do it. And, and certainly brave, I think, for anybody who sits right here on this couch, including me, yeah. to be able to, to work through that. I feel just beyond blessed that the world will hear this conversation, that we brought our full selves to it yeah. um, with no barriers, with no filters, um, and, with, and with real grace and courage. Goodness and grief can live in the same space. Mm -hmm. And if adoption can't teach us that, I don't know what can. Yeah.